Hello, how are you doing? As I have mentioned before, I have uh, an Etsy shop where I sell my handmade jewelry. Some of them are made out of polymer clay and some of them are made out of epoxy resin. And today I would like to share with you how I make my resin pieces. I like to use dried moss and mushrooms, so let's see how it turns out. It's a relatively new hobby of mine and I've been gathering the materials and tools for the past year. Here you can see the tools I'm using. And as you can see, I'm using the dried moss and mushrooms and this is how we make them. The pearls are from the dehumidifier bags, which is pretty cheap and accessible material. And uh, we use also napkins to make the layers and just put the moss and mushrooms in. And that's it. After a few days they're completely dry and perfect to use. I am using resin resin. It's from a local Dutch web shop. I'm happy with the UV resistance, so it does not yellow. The one downside of this resin is that you need to mix it 100 units to 60 units, which is slightly inconvenient in comparison to 5051, for example. This resin is also quite liquid, so I need to take that in account and first make stuff that does not require a thicker resin because of course anything you drop into resin that is too liquid will sink down to the bottom of the mold which is not always what I wish. Of course I need to mix it properly as we need to do with any epoxy resin. And straight to the first piece I'm trying to insert a little twig of dried heather it's slightly tricky because the heather falls apart when it's dry, but I wanted to try. And you know, it's always good to experiment because sometimes you may think it's not going to turn out well, but in the end it does, because resin can be quite unpredictable sometimes. You can see some of the flowers fell off, so Let's see if it's good or not later when we unmold it. I'm filling in more resin and then I thought I would put some moss on the top or like it will be the bottom. So it looks like it's growing from the moss. And I'm gonna drop some mica powder on top. It usually creates one of those two effects. First one is gradient, the second is uh, it will create a little strings of mica falling down, which looks like tiny bubbles or like glittery strings. It's really pretty. Second thing I'm gonna show here is a pair of earrings, little drops with suspended moss and mushroom. I always drip a little drop of resin and then I put the moss in. This way it stays approximately where I want it. Now another drop to fill it a bit more in. And now I'm adding the mushroom. These are coral fungi. I always rely on the tweezers, but it's also good to have little toothpicks at hand to make sure I can place the item where I actually want it. Sometimes I need to reorganize, of course. And now I'm adding a little bit more of the moss. And now it's time to poke out the, the air bubbles that might have gotten caught in the tip. Fill it in completely and I'm, I'm popping the bubbles with fire and that's it. Next piece. I decided to use some gold flakes, so I'm gonna just stuff them in, in the mold. 
mix it a bit. There is already a drop of resin. Now adding a bit more. Pokey poke. And a piece of dried fern. Last piece I'm gonna show is not gonna use any dried stuff. It's just for fun, some mica powder and blue coloring. Adding a few drops and I'm gonna add some of the gold on the top as well. I usually tend to overfill these molds because uh, the resin shrinks as it dries. And because these molds are a bit unstable on their own, I usually let them dry in a paper cup. I stick them in and that's it. Now they can go to the pressure pot. One more simple item, just drip some resin in the mold, put in some dried moss and with more resin with the gold and that's it. I made also more things off the camera and we will gonna unmold them later together. I've placed all the molds on a little stand and put them inside of a pressure pot. Having your resin pieces dry in the pressure pot is amazing. It just removes most of the bubbles and you end up with like really clear casts. After 24 hours we can open the pot. Uh, it's releasing the pressure now and I'm always looking forward to it. It's like little Christmas because you're gonna open it and there's gonna be gifts for you and you don't know what exactly it is. So I really like to do this. Opening it. Okay, let's demold them. Oh, I really like this with the green and the sparkles. You can't see it now, but I will show photos later. These are the earrings. You can see there's a lip, but we're gonna do something about it. And now the long ones. They're a bit of a struggle to remove from the molds, especially when it's only after 24 hours and it's still a bit flexible and tacky. Okay, so this one turned out okay-ish. This one, mm, not so happy about it, to be honest. With this one, the mushroom sank a bit too deep, but never mind, it can happen. Okay, now the blue one and oh yeah, that one is pretty. I'm happy about it. I made also some little cabochons for stud earrings. And every time I pour the leftover resin into some random mold, usually the beads, and then I make experiments with them. Okay, so our pieces are hard, but not too hard, so we can still cut down and adjust the pieces and we can also install the little hooks that need to be screwed in, which is quite hard to do when the resin gets completely solid. It happened to me a couple times that I just broke it off. Now I'm using very sharp knife to remove the bits that I don't want on the earrings. If you do this, please be careful. Do not cut yourself. Sorry it's so blurry, but I was paying more attention to not chopping off my fingers than um, having the camera focused. So I'm sorry about that. And now if we need to fix something, we can do that with UV resin. For example, here the resin created kind of a dimple as it dried and shrank. So I'm gonna fill that in with the UV resin. I use a toothpick to spread it out very carefully so it does not drip on the sides of the pendant. 
I'm not a big of fan of UV resin. I have a problem curing it. I'm not sure if, if it's just the bottle I have, that it's from some weird batch, but a lot of the time it dries out quite sticky on the surface. But for the small details like this, it's usually okay and it's easy to be fixed afterwards. I cure it with a torch. The footage is fast forward, so here I shine on it only for a couple seconds, basically. But it was like a minute or two in real life. And now onto the earrings. For these, I need to send them down. I use about six grades of sending paper, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. And the final is this scratch remover to polish it. Actually with this pair of earrings something went wrong as I was sending it and what happened is that I opened one of the plants. So I tried to fix it by applying layer of UV resin. But as I said, sometimes it gets really sticky and that's what happened too. And I tried to remove the sticky layer with isopropyl alcohol, but it really did not help. I messed it up. So I need to work a bit more on this pair. And here we have the final badge. You can see the results. I think it's okay. Some of them turned out not as I wanted them, but some of them turned out really good, like the green ones with the little sparkly pieces of mica in it. I think those are quite pretty. And as I said, you can find my stuff on Etsy. So if you like what I make, please go and check it out. And perhaps you will pick something for yourself. If you have any questions or requests, please don't hesitate to contact me. And as usual, thank you for watching and have a great day.